What's up everyone, it's your boy Mayumi and we are back with another video. Uh, I, I can't do it, I can't do it. Hello everybody, Mayumi here. So I am now back from Necronom Idol's Birmingham show, and what a show it was. So, Wednesday 17th of July, King's Heath, The Hare and the Hounds. The Hare and the Hounds was built in 1820 and was extensively refurbished in 1907 to become a dance hall of sorts. Being nearly 200 years old, the pub has quite a rich history in music, hosting the Beatles and the Rolling Stones in the 60s, being the first place UB40 performed live in 1979, and being a prominent venue for the early 90s to present day local DJs leading to the popularity of drum and bass and dubstep that Birmingham is well known for. And for continuing to host musicians to this day, like Necro and Idol of course. I'm sure you've all seen the live videos like this one that was from this show, and I can tell you that none of it compares to seeing them in the flesh. Their shows have an edge to them that is hard to put into words, almost like crossing the looking glass. Looking from outside is very different to looking from within. There is an energy that manifests itself at a Necroma show that I'm sure is not just mutually exclusive to the audience. The girls seem to feed on every bit of atmosphere they can in order to amplify it and create a truly cult-like experience. They have married the typical J-Park call and response routine with their own creepy worship circle and it really is mesmerising. Necroma opened the show with Strange Aeons, a full-on metal assault, quite the fan favourite. Then they played a couple of songs from their newest album, Scions of the Blasted Heap. Quite fitting as the entire show very nearly blasted a Necronom Idol sized hole into King's Heap. After a brief chat with the crowd, Yumari likes Japanese animation, she told me to tell you. At this point they played a few older songs such as Sarnath, a song from their very early days that it would be cool to get a re-recorded version of because, just me personally, I prefer live versions these days. One of my absolute favourite Necroma songs is Lamina Maledictum, and midway through the set, they performed it. I had so much fun I nearly broke my neck. After a few songs from more recent years such as End of Days and Dirge of Balder, they finished up with Skulls in the Stars, a proper cybergoth foot stomper. It's the go-to Necroma tune for most fans, and hearing and seeing it done live has only reinforced my addiction to it. So, here's the bit that everyone always loves. The merch. I picked up a lot more than I was planning to. I got a lovely poster for my wall to go next to my signed Idol and Infamous poster and the Baby Metal Shrine. I also picked up a couple of CDs, a limited edition of Deathless, and a copy of their new offerings, Hyons of the Blasted Heath. I also picked up some vinyl, Nemesis with a beautiful pink marble aesthetic, Void Him in a translucent violet style, and the European issue of Deathless on standard black vinyl. These are now some of my most treasured vinyls and I have quite a few. Finally, of course I got a checky. To be cost effective, I went with the unsigned group option. I don't really have a favourite member, though I think Himari and I really clicked during the meeting. She really liked this particular tattoo. All together now. Himari likes Japanese animation. They were all lovely, and I handled myself quite well considering I'm not used to talking to five beautiful women all at the same time in a language that I barely understand. <laughs> Before I wrap this up, I'd like to do a few shout outs. Thank you, Paul and Fran. You were great guys to hang out with before the gig. 
Thank you to Derek for overseeing a truly awesome show and for helping me out with all the vinyls I bought. And last but definitely not least, thank you to Necronom Idol themselves, Risaki, Himari, Ray, Michelle and Kunogi for coming to my country and giving it a few nights of your dark magic. Cheers ladies.